Welcome to episode number 148 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media and presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. Look who's dropping in, fresh off of his West Coast swing through Seattle and then Oakland. He is back in Chicago. Hello, Lucas Giolito. The Bears. The Bears. I, was, I want to start with this. I'm kind of a travel freak. I don't know if you are because you do it so much. I constantly check like my my inbound plane if it's going to be on time and stuff. And I always check the weather where I'm flying. Y'all flew into a shit storm yesterday, did you not? wasn't too nope. bad. It was, it got was out of little... town. Did you see the Bears weather? Yeah, the weather during the day was bad. Oh. But when we we got in at like midnight, it was like chilly, but it wasn't bad. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you even check that stuff? Or are you just like, all right, I'm going to get on a plane. We'll land in the next city. I'm good to go. Um, I don't really check too much. Uh, I do a courtesy weather app check in the morning when I wake up uh, for whether we're at home or on the road somewhere just to see if I need to have a sweatshirt or not. Got it. Do you check? Um, God, the bear stuff is amazing. That yeah. video at the end after they clinched the game and Justin Fields leading all those guys on the slip and slide. Yeah, they were playing the bowl of soup yesterday at Soldier Field. Wow, that was incredible. I, <laughs> I mean, I've rarely seen a field that sloppy. Yeah, that was incredible. What a look. Yeah, I mean, do you even like when you pack for like a, let's say a three city 10 day trip, do you check the weather app ahead of time and you're like, oh, it's going to be chilly there and warm there? Um, During the summer months, I don't. It's just T-shirts, jeans, shorts. Uh, but now that we're getting into it, September, like later in the year, I'm probably going to start checking, uh, depending on where we're going. Like Cleveland might be cold, rainy. Um, wow. There's been a lot of rain in Cleveland this year. I don't know if you've no noticed, shit. Chris, but like, <laughs> I feel like there's constant game cancellations going on in Cleveland. Like we have a makeup game this week. We have to fly in for one day. Yeah. The day game too. Mm-hmm. Suck on that. Are yeah. you pitching it? No. Oh, thank God. You know that that's my torment. When I pitch against Cleveland? I hate it. They got me pretty it. good last time. Yeah. I know. I've usually done well, but they got me pretty good last time. They had a good approach. Mm. Okay. It's so maybe so maybe part like, of the reason why I'm not pitching that game. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Come on now. So what do you get? Friday or something? You get Friday. I'm assuming Friday, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know where you guys go after that. You got a quick two game home series in Colorado. Where'd he go? Detroit. Oh, Detroit. I just finished watching uh, Hard Knocks. Oh, what'd you yeah. think? Fantastic. Dan like makes coach, you root for those guys. Badass right? coaching staff, man. Yeah. Dan Campbell's a fun one. He is yeah. like, and he has them. It's funny because like, you don't ever um, want to describe a professional team as boy, they play hard. Cause that's something you reserve for like the JV team in high school. Like, mm -hmm. God, they really tried hard. Cause they're, you know, their jobs to win the freaking Super Bowl. You're see, you're a football guy. Like what are they missing? Talent. It's just talent. Yeah, they they're starting to build more of it. But they got that they're, defensive end, yes. uh, Aiden Hutchinson. He's a yep. stud. He, he looks like a stud. a stud. You know, they're getting better along the offensive and defensive lines. And I will tell you this: in the NFL, if you get better up front, you are going to get better in a hurry. Mm -hmm. A hurry. So they're going to be okay. And they played a really good team. Like I picked the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. People think I'm nuts, but I wanted to have fun and kind of go out on a limb this year. So I think they're going to be okay. They're going to be in a lot of games. Yeah, but that's yeah, they're a, they're doing um they're doing an in season hard knocks too for the Cardinals. Let me tell you something. Last year they did it with the Colts for the first time, and it was freaking unbelievable. It was so good. So the good. in season hard knocks, unbelievable. Do you remember when baseball did that with the Giants? The Giants and the Marlins, I think, got a season, and then they banged it. You know what? I forget what it was called. Was it on HBO? Showtime. It was on Showtime. It was on Showtime. Exactly. I, I watched the Giants one and I watched, I think, some of the Marlins one. But then they they called it. I in I don't know. There's something about baseball where it it doesn't have the same kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't know, like a lure to it. Well, you know what it is? 
uh, the franchise. Good pull, Robbie Scirocco. The franchise. You, you know what it is? Because the Giants actually had some really good personalities for that one. Um, the problem is, is that the sports played every day. I think. Yeah. And it really could be an annoyance for you guys to have freaking cameras in your face every day. Yeah, I can't imagine. That, that's the thing I was thinking about. Well, not when I was why I was a kid when I watched it, but right. like now it's like, man, if we had like a hard knocks kind of thing going on where it's like there's constant cameras, I feel like it would be it would it would rub a lot of guys the wrong way for sure. Who would be the star of your team if we did a hard knocks? Ooh. Stories. You need good stories. Joe Kelly. Um he might he might get in a little too much trouble. Um, I'm trying he's to fun, think. Though. He'll say anything, won't he, Joe Kelly? Yeah, no, he said he speaks his mind always. <laughs> Does um, any of the any of the um Latin guys? That's what I'm. Mean? That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, Abreu. I think Jose Abreu. Yeah, at all times you're gonna get just amazing, amazing content. Because his personality is like one of a kind, his story, everything is just amazing. Um, so, like for example, how is his English? He's been over here since 2014 now. Yeah. And like, how do you how well do you guys communicate with one another? Great. Yeah, yeah. I I'd say like he's fluent in English as far as hearing it and understanding it, and then. Um, like just enough vocabulary, just enough, like to be able to get by in a conversation in uh -huh. English, totally fine. Yeah. And he seems like such a good dude, man. Yeah. He's the best. He's freaking rock solid too. in mm -hmm. that batter's box. God. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe what this guy plays through. <laughs> He's beat up, huh? Oh, always. Yeah, he does. He wears it a lot out there. Guys pitch him inside. Plus, he's got the cool, um, now that I'm a facial hair connoisseur, he's got mm. the little, like, rubber band in the beard thing working. He's not doing the rubber band this year. It's out? Maybe earlier in the year he was, but, no, he used to have the long beard, and he had the rubber band. I don't think he's doing it right now. I could be wrong. I don't remember. We have a lot of facial hair on our team. That's baseball, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 you know, the NFL season, I had my first day yesterday and we're taping this on a Monday, obviously. And uh, I contemplated shaving the beard and I was like, no, nah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going for it this year. Yeah. And I salt and pepper. It looks good. I darkened it. I did. You was it like straight gray? It was, it was closer to Santa Claus than you. Like <laughs> you, yours is straight black. Mine was much closer to Santa Claus. Yeah. Look like Tony Clark a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. But the problem is we've got so Lucas, you'll be excited. BattleBots season seven just got announced. Mm. And uh, the question is whether or not my executive producers will allow me to keep it for that because I've been clean shaven for six years. My analyst has a beard. Our announcer Farouk has a beard. So if I have a beard, now they're going to be like, come on, Chris, it's a little too much. Too much. Mm. Can I fight it or no? Well, I think it looks good. I mean, I'm I'm very much on the beard train. Uh, I have been for years as soon as I got out of the minor leagues, and I didn't have a rule hanging over my head anymore. It's been, that's been it for me. You'd have Any, to get rid anything of it. to make the jawline look better. What? I even forget what you look like without a beard. It's been so long. I don't remember either, to be honest. Well, that's the, that's the man, though, that Ari fell in love with. Yeah. I mean, you were 14. And please tell me you didn't have a full freaking beard at 14. Mm, 17. 17. Uh, wow. Well, but you got these laid eyes on each other at 14. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Look at this. Look at that. I'm also 21 there. Or 22. So God, it's not bad. So, you look so different, though bizarre no yeah look at that 
That's an athletic follow through. What are you shaking your head at? <laughs> I don't like it. Okay. Rob, remove it from the screen. Strike it from the record. <laughs> hey, more of the show is coming your way, but I want to talk to you about something that's really important and something that I believe in. And it's a group called Better Help. And they are out there to help you get paired with the right therapist out there uh, to talk about whatever is bothering you, whatever is good in your life. I have always been a huge believer in therapy. Like I started it when I was a kid. Uh, and I think probably back then, People would have looked at you and said, hey, what's what's wrong with you? Why do you need to go to see ther a therapist or whatever? That's not the way the world works anymore. Mental health is so important. You will hear people. You will hear people in your company. You will hear just everyday people talking about the importance of a, a good, strong mental health. And, you know, when you're when something is bothering you physically, right, you go to a doctor and you feel good about it. You're like, I'm not going to treat myself. So if something is going on in your brain that you can't quite figure it out, or if it is bothering you, or if you're feeling a little anxious, uh, or whatever it is, then go see a therapist. And here's the great thing about this company, is that they will match you up with a therapist that they think will be a perfect fit for you. If it doesn't work out, we'll go try another therapist. It's also accessible, it's affordable, it is entirely online, so you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to find an office. You don't have to find a parking space. This is the way it is done. So I want you to go to betterhelp.com slash rotation. You're going to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash rotation. Go talk to somebody. It'll help. So we basically have about 20 games to go here in the season. At this point, you're playing catch up to the Guardians. How much um, scoreboard watching do you personally do? Um, this is probably the most I've ever done. Well, yeah, because you all were lapping the field last year. So, yeah, I previous years, last like couple of years, the um, well, the COVID season was interesting because we were playing really well and then we clinched a playoff spot and then we were terrible right. until the end. And so like we were leading the division and that was all over and we ended up going to um, Oakland, Oakland for the uh, three game playoff or whatever it's called. Then last year we kind of ran away with the division. Whereas this year, I mean, we're, we were behind and now we're, you know, it's that two games back, one game back, two games back, two and a half games back. So yeah, I, I'm checking it pretty much every day. Does it affect the way you feel during a game? Because as no. fans, like we're constantly going, like we're bouncing back and forth between games. I'm checking you guys out. I'm checking the twins out. And I'm sitting here yelling at the screen. Like when Oakland, you guys were down to your last out the other night in Oakland. Sorry, I, listen, I'm rooting for the Guardians. You know that. And I was like, okay, this is a big deal. And you guys all, you put up a five spot in the night. Uh, that was unreal. Right? I started I, mean, I started that game and, and yeah. I felt bad because it was, I mean, we got no hit through five. I gave up three runs over six. And I'm like, it's it sucks because like technically it's quality start and you did your job as a starting pitcher. But I'm like, man, in game, it's all the same. But like after I was like, shit, you know, I, you know, it's important that we win these. And uh, I had to, I didn't do a good job of matching the uh, other side's energy defensively gave up a few, but we're kind of at that point now, like our team, um, you know, you're seeing all the talent we have starting to, to shine a little bit more, uh, a little bit more cohesive, uh, guys are really playing as hard as they can. Um, we're playing a lot more focused. It's just that point. It's that point in the year where I think collectively we're trying to turn it on a little bit more and just see what happens. I mean, control what we can control. That's really it. That's that's kind of what I meant. Like in the game, it's all the same. Like I'm competing. Uh, you know, I want to do my job. You know, hopefully throw up a bunch of zeros, but if not, like keep it low. Uh, offense, 
focus at bats, have a good, good approach, punish mistakes. We did that for most of the series. Uh, the Oakland series yesterday was a rough one, but uh, we got some important games coming up. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. It's going to be a fun, fun, fun high wire act down the stretch in that, in that division. No question. Did you get a chance to see Tony LaRusso this weekend? I know he was at Dave Stewart's retirement ceremony. Yeah. Saw him yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Briefly. I mean, he came in, he shook all of our hands. He seems to be in good spirits and, and doing much better. Um, I mean, honestly, like when, you know, he had to go to Arizona and everything with the pacemaker, uh, even the day of like, he was, he seemed completely fine. I think it was just, they were like monitoring and maybe something popped up. He had to go get it checked out, but I think he's good. And you guys have no idea how it's going to play out the rest of the year. I mean, whether it's him or Miguel Cairo or right. Yeah, we'll see. Wow. There's some people that are saying that this is the difference, that there's a different breath of fresh air in the, in the dugout and in the clubhouse and a different energy. Is that fair? Um, yeah, I'd say so. I think that's fair to say. Uh, I think a lot more of it has to do with kind of the position we're in and like realizing, you know, what's possible given the state of the division. And, you know, despite playing not up to expectation, I'm close pretty poorly for most of the year. Uh, we're still in a spot to be able to sneak in the playoffs. Um, you know, and then losing Tony, uh, you know, kind of giving that motivation, like, all right, cool. Like let's do this for, for our guy, for our manager while, while he's away and, you know, really give it our all each day. That's, that's kind of the stuff that, that Cairo has been really stressing, um, you know, like right when he, right when he got put in the position and took over as manager, um, you know, whatever people want to say about Tony and, and how he's managed. I mean, he, lo he loves the shit out of us and he cares about all of us uh, as a team, as individuals, he wants to see us succeed. And so, you know, we're, we're giving it our all in, in part for him right now. And do you think that even though it's a short span that a guy like Miguel Cairo has shown that he could manage in this league? I think so. Yeah, he does a good job. He, he communicates with all the players. Um, obviously, very, very personable. Um, you know, he, he played in this league not too long ago. Right. Um, you know, obviously, great connection with, with the Latino players. We have a lot of Latino players on our team. Um, and I think that over the years, he's learned from a lot of the best, including Tony. And so he's been doing a wonderful job. Good. Good for him. I like to hear those stories. Um, I want to focus on a couple of league-wide issues here real quick. One was something that happened in my Guardians game against the Twins the other night, and I'm not sure if you saw it, that James Karinchek was pitching. Oh, the hair thing, yeah. And Rocco Baldelli, the manager of the Twins, asked to have a substance check. So Teddy Barrett comes back, checks the belt, checks the hands, checks the glove. Then he has to give him essentially what is a lice check, like we had in elementary school. Yeah. I was laughing at, my ass off when it. Teddy Barrett is running his fingers. So were... soft, too. Like, <laughs> he's like stroking him, stroking the back of his head. <laughs> Could you imagine if Ted Barrett he went, he went a little bit down here too? He like hit he hit the lower back area. What do you call that? The nape, the nape of the neck. <laughs> Lucas, if Ted Barrett had to run his fingers through your the nape of your neck and your hair, how would that go? I'll I'll never have to worry about that because I don't I don't go like this every other pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame Rocco Baldelli for that at all. You don't? No. Um, you know, 
you know, Karen check's got a lot of, I've been watching him pitch for a number of years now. He has a lot of like quirks and stuff out there. He is very ticky, nervous ticks, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, a lot of stuff he's done in the past, it looks like he's applying foreign substances to the baseball. Right. Whether he ever did or not, I don't know. It's not my place to say. Um, but the the hair thing, they showed like clips of what he was doing with his hair. Um, so I don't blame the manager for like getting paranoid and being like, hey, like, look at what this guy's doing. Go and check him. But they did it. They did the check. Didn't find anything. Cool. Let's move on with the game. Uh, I'm not going to blame the manager for doing that. It is what it is. Um, I had I had a problem with him coming out on a 2-2 count. Oh, yeah. I didn't know the situation. Maybe I, I, I don't know. I, this is why I'm not a manager. I'm never going to be a manager because these decisions like get so scrutinized. Yeah. Like everyone has an opinion. It's, it's difficult, such a hard job, but um, I will say that like for some guys hair, like you get like sweat from your hair and you hit the rosin bag. It helps with creating like tackiness. And that is legal by the way. That is full. To the- Fully legal, fully legal. Doesn't work for me. I think it's genetics. We have a certain, we have a starting pitcher on our team that's Uh having a hell of a year. Absolute banger year. Cy Young caliber. Not saying any names. Okay. He goes to his hair and he goes to the rosin bag and he gets, uh, like it helps a lot. Like it helps giving that rosin, like that sweat. And it creates like a nice, uh, I don't know, just like a nice tack. So you have a good grip on the baseball. When I go to my hair and I go to the rosin, it like wipes it all off. Like my (laughs) hair, my sweat on my face and my hair is like too watery or something because it does not work at all. (laughs) You're too soluble, Lucas. I guess so. I guess so. So yeah, I'm I'm assuming Karen Check doing the same thing a lot of other pitchers are doing get a little get a little hair sweat mix it with the rosin and you're feeling good That's and it's fully legal it is legal this is my oldest son who's facetiming me watch this hey 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 i'm on with lucas giolito right now oh shoot my bad can you say hi to lucas hey lucas That's what's Josh. going on yeah all Josh right down san diego right yeah, he is. Yeah, he probably lives close to where you're going to be living. He now he ain't in the highfalutin district. I can tell you that though. No, but I no, but I will be after making my producer money at UCSD. Okay, all right, that's enough. <laughs> a game. All right, say goodbye to Lucas. All right, bye, bye, Lucas. Next See ya. <laughs> bye, love you. I didn't hear what he said. What after he, he what? He's he's he said I'm making uh big time producer money. He's so he works for um. Bally's he does the pregame show for the Padres the pre and post game he's a production assistant starting to move up in the ranks doing a nice nice job and then he also for UC San Diego they stream all their sporting events so they need young kids to help run camera produce direct Mm -hmm. and so he's he's starting to get into that too but he's enjoying it yeah it's cool my uh my little brother just got an agent did he yeah CAA, hey. welcome oh, you, to the family. Welcome to the family. <laughs> oh my God, there goes ten percent of his earnings. <laughs> you baseball guys, you get lucky. You only have to give like three percent. Five? I don't remember. Better negotiate that down for the for the for the big money deal. <clears throat> Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> First, I love my problem. agent. I love my agent too much. I know they're good people. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's like 10, it's like 10% of, I don't remember like marketing stuff or, and then like actual contract is, I don't know, three, four, five, something like that. You get to those sort of numbers. You just stop paying attention for me. When I write the check every month, I'm like, fuck. 
<laughs> you know, like they did 20 minutes of work for three years from your contract. They reap the benefits. Represent yourself, good. man. Yeah, you can't do that either. I'm too yeah. dumb. All right, time to talk about one of my favorite products out there, Win Reality. It is the VR baseball training application that's available on the MetaQuest 2. Gives players access to unlimited game speed reps no matter where they are. You can even, yes, use your own bat. Here's the cool thing. Their catalog, their library consists of 600-plus pitchers down from 8U to Pro. From the release to the spin to the speed, you as a hitter will get a chance to study every pitch, then hit in real time. Here's the great thing. It helps you with pitch recognition. Like sometimes in the baseball world, you don't have a buddy that can throw a fastball that hits 84 miles an hour, or has a, you know, a big hammer on it or whatever it is. You want to work on the recognition, you just use win reality. In fact, it is used by a majority of MLB teams and one particular MLB player, Paul Goldschmidt, how's the year he's having? Maybe a triple crown, maybe an NL MVP. Yes, he partially has win reality to thank for that. Coaches rave about it. Parents love it. It is not a game. It is a revolutionary tool that improves hitting in a real game of baseball. It is just awesome. So I want you to go to winreality.com slash Rose and sign up today. Speaking of that maybe unnamed guy who's had a pretty good year on your pitching staff, he almost had an amazing, amazing finish. You guys were up huge against the twin. First of all, how nervous were you? when Dylan Cease was one out from a no-hitter. Shaking. I was freaking out. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was it, it was up there the most nervous I've ever been uh, watching a game. More nervous than when you were throwing your no-hitter, right? Yeah, it's different. It's different when you're in control versus when you're you're watching. That's why I don't think I could ever coach – you know, I always I joke like, oh, I'm never going to manage like p- being a pitching coach. Hell no. It's too nerve wracking because you don't have control. You don't get to do it. You're just sitting there watching and like hoping. There's a lot of people who said when he was facing Luis Arise, who was the leading hitter in the American League at the time. Best contact hitter in baseball. Yeah, a tough, tough out. And you guys are up, what, 13 nothing or 10, whatever it was. It was ridiculous. 13 nothing. AJ Pruszynski said on the broadcast on the yeah, we're up broadcast, third, they threw a position player. Yeah, they did. Didn't, uh, the, didn't like that. I thought that was bullshit too. Didn't like it was that. Only like seven nothing at the time or something. Yeah, it was seven nothing. They had guys in their bullpen that could have thrown. Yeah, like I looked at it. We all did. Uh, they had guys. You know, I don't know everything. I don't know who's banged up. Whatever, who's sore. But they had pitchers in the pen, but they opted to give them an extra day to cover one inning with a position player, which, you know, position players pitching is always like, yeah, it's like fun. It's like the circus, but it's like, don't do it unless you have to. Right. And you can't ask your hitters to not try. That's not fair to them. Yeah, they got to go up there and, and take their best swings. Like, they don't, you know. Yeah. I'm a pitcher, so, like, if I hadn't at bat that inning, I would have str- swung a miss on purpose three times so Dylan could get back out there. <laughs> but I don't care about my batting average. I don't care about my RBIs, you know. Right. Um, those guys, like, they hit a double, they hit a home run. Like it's real. It's not like, Oh, it's not like an asterisk. It's a real, it's on their stat line for the year. So yes, it is. Uh, yeah. We ended up putting a bunch more runs on the position guy. Long inning didn't affect Dylan though. He went out there oh. confident, uh, got the first two outs. Um, you know, just, just that one slider to rise, like left it a little too middle in the strike zone. He put a good swing on it. That's baseball. You, know, you did not hear the broadcast, but AJ Pruszynski, who was calling the game on Fox and had been a part of, you know, a no hitter before, is saying, I want nothing to do with Luis Arise. I am throwing him four pitches off the plate. And if he goes and knocks one into left field when it's six inches off the plate, good for him. He says, I'm taking the next guy. It's that yeah. simple. Would you have done that 
if you were had been on the mound in that situation? Um, yeah, the, the, there's no, there's no uh, reason to throw him hittable strikes. There's no reason to, like, you want to essentially execute strike the ball, put away pitches for the entire bat. Um, and, or, you know, uh, you want to try and make as good pitches as you can. Um, you know, Dylan's intention with that slider was to throw a back foot, even in, I think the count was one, one, or what was it? Oh, one. Robbie, uh, let's put that back up there. I don't remember. One, one one. Yeah. So I mean, if you see like Sebi's setup, it was, I believe, down and in. He's trying to throw a good down and in slider, get a rollover, get a swing and miss. Yeah. See, he's got his glove down on the ground. No, not a bad pitch. I mean, Dylan gets success with that pitch all the time. He's got like the best slider in baseball. Uh, but just left it a little up and Raya's put a good swing on it. You know, the thing is it, he could have been a little bit more out in front and he hits a line drive to a right fielder. You know, that's how my no hitter ended. Mm -hmm. I made a mistake. Guy put a good swing on it and went directly to a right fielder at like hundred miles an hour or more. Um, that's, you gotta be, you gotta, I've said before, like you have to get lucky to throw a no hitter or a perfect game. Mm -hmm. Like the stars have to align. It's just unfortunate that it ended, uh, you know, with two outs I think that's happened like a good amount of times in baseball, right? Oh, yeah. There's been plenty. But the one thing that I'm like super proud of Dylan for, like after, he was like obviously a little upset and everything, but he did get his first career complete game, and it was a complete game shutout. And I told him this year, I mean, he's been having a banger year, and I told him like, Last thing on your checklist for this year, throw your first complete game. And then I think like two starts later, he did it. And it was almost a no hitter. Um, was he upset afterward, though? Yeah, I mean, he was obviously upset that he was so close and didn't get it. But in this what I've, I've been like trailing. I've been all over the place in my thoughts. But uh one thing I'm proud of him for is like, he's like, well, at least I didn't just like throw four shitty balls and move on to the next guy. Like I challenged him best hitter in their lineup. I wanted to challenge him. It was his third at bat or fourth at bat. Probably his fourth at bat, fourth yeah. at bat. Yeah. Cause it carried. Yeah. So, and uh, you know, it is what it is. So I am, I am proud of him for, you know, not like trying to like, you know, like kind of cheat your way to the the no hitter in the final inning. Cheat your way. I mean, it could have they could have done the intentional walk. He doesn't even throw pitches, you know. But no, it was uh, g gave it his absolute all for nine innings. All right. For, first thing I told him is you're going to get one. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, his stuff has been incredibly nasty. Yeah, he, he's uh, gonna he's gonna throw at least a no hitter, probably multiple in his career. Great note from Rob Scirocco who says twelve no hitters slash perfect games have been interrupted with two outs to go since twenty ten. A dozen of them with one out to get. With one like out, like two get. outs in the nine. Oof. Yep. There's the one super bullshit one uh, on the. Yes, Armando Galarraga. Armando Galarraga, yeah, covering first base. Hey, that would have been a perfect game. And Jim Joyce, who's now a retired umpire, blew the call. We did not have replay at the time. I mean, if you go watch the Guardians, then Indians dugout, they're all up on the rail, and their faces, they can't believe he called them safe. Like, they're all like this, like, oh, my God. Because mm. they knew that, they, you know, I talked to Jim Joyce about that years later. What do you say? I told him I was proud of him, the way that, that he handled things, um, where he 
he was in tears the next day. I don't know if you remember this. He was in tears. Yeah, he yeah. Out. He so he immediately admitted fault and was like, oh. I, I messed up. He ran back to the room and uh and checked it out. And he was like, Oh my god, I just cost that kid a perfect game. Oh he went and apologized. He went and yeah. apologized to Galarraga, he went and apologized to Leland. And the next day he's working behind the dish and he's in tears oh. coming out. And thankfully, the Tigers, they were so classy about this. Galarraga brought the lineup card out. You know, the the fans gave him an ovation. Like, I, I can get emotional just looking at it. Man, that's rough. Tough one. Wow. Crazy, isn't it? Oh. Hey, you football fans, the NFL's opening week was action packed and it's just getting started. Get ready for week two of touchdowns, big plays and even bigger wins with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. Want more action? Everyone. I mean everyone, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple. This Sunday, bet on an NFL team to win, and if your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's promo code ROSE only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Now back to the show. All right. Let me ask you something. You just talked about Dylan Cease challenging Luis Arise. Let's play the little what if game. What if Albert Pujols was on 699 homers? Your team either had clinched a playoff berth knew what seed you were going to be, or your team was out of it. Would you just throw them fastballs? <laughs> do you want to be the 700th? I'm just saying, would you want um, to, what would you do? Honestly, right this year, like if we were to play the Cardinals, like last series of the year, and I had a start, we had already clinched a playoff berth. I mean, with my ERA this year, I, I throw, I, I give up a home run. It might be going down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll pipe them some heaters down the middle. <laughs> Let's say it was a normal Lucas year. Um, no, I'm trying to get him out with the best pitches I can. If I give it up, it would be like kind of cool. Mm. like low key it's like oh man that's embarrassing but then for the rest of my life i'm like i got this special connection with albert pujos hell yeah i love to hear that i think most guys would feel that way to be honest with you we were talking about that a similar thing in the dugout the other day with um giving up like first major league hits and first major league home runs uh Liam does this thing where he always jinxes himself. Obviously, Liam, one of the best closers in baseball, nasty stuff. Um, but he like always talks about like giving up first hits and first homers. And then when we play a team that has like a guy debuting, or maybe he's already debuted, but he hasn't gotten a hit yet. When Liam comes in to close the game, he always gives up a hit to that guy. <laughs> um That's funny. Yeah. Did but, you see what Shohei did the other day? I don't or know. Show- Pitched seven innings and hit six home runs and <laughs> got like seven war points for one game. <laughs> Not quite. He did hit two homers in a game against the Tigers. So the Tigers threw a position player, Clemens. And he oh, came in. Clemens and- through the backdoor air cutter. Yes. That was, was disgusting. 68, 68 mile an hour. And, you know, he was all fired up. He wanted the baseball afterward. Shohei signed it the next day. And that was a nasty pitch. That was a nasty pitch. I love that. I think we need more of that in the game. 
More what? I think the the humanizing effect, like so I bet you guys, some guys who grew you know grew up playing in the 70s and 80s would be like, well, that's bullshit. You don't do that's a big moment. I know that he's the son of a seven-time Cy Young Award winner, but I think that's pretty damn cool that Shohei has the wherewithal to say, hey, good job. That was cool. He could have been a dick about it, I suppose. Who, Shohei? Yeah, he could have. I'm no saying. No way, he's... man. He's like the nicest guy ever. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. Is that, yeah. uh, I, I agree. I'm just saying that some guys wouldn't have been like, yeah, here, let me write you a note. Like, I think it's a humanizing effect. I think that's cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm all for it. All right. Not too into it. It's okay. I, I'm into it. I I think it's cool. I'm not the biggest like memorabilia guy. I've, we've talked about this before. Yeah, I know. I don't care too much about memorabilia. For me, it's more about like experiences. Um, But yeah, I, absolutely. You strike Shohei Itani out. It was a nasty pitch, man. I, I'm not going to lie. I wish I could throw that. <laughs> that was like something Granky would come up with. Some position players get up there. We face a, a position player on Oakland, a noisy. Oh, yeah. Sheldon Noisy. Uh-huh. Dude was just hammering the zone with like 45 mile an hour curveballs against us. <laughs> can Robbie, can you pull up some of that inning? It was the game. It was like a huge blowout. I think it was, it was a Friday. game Dylan pitched Saturday. It was one of the games Thursday. Elvis, Elvis Andrews hit like seven RBIs. Thursday? No, it was either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. That's where Friday I pitched and we came back. Okay. So it was it wasn't Saturday, Saturday, maybe? I think it was Saturday. Robbie will get to it. Um just unbelievable. I'm like, I have certain I'm some games where it's like Man, I can't land my curveball to save my life. Like if there's a gun to my head and it was like, hey, just throw a curveball for a strike and you're you're fine. I'd be freaking out. Like this, he was just dropping these in there. Is that is that really a curve or is that just a gravity ball? What is that? I think he's like, I think he's like turn like footballing, like turning it over a little bit. Look at that. My God, the loud out right there. And other guys were saying he's got 92 in his back pocket. Really? Yeah. So I, I, I think that his plan was to go slow, slow, slow. And then if he got two strikes, I mean, we put the ball in play. Um, but if he got two strikes, I think he would have tried to blow a little bit of cheese. Air it out. Um, I know this is not your thing. You are not a fantasy football player. But I'm a huge football guy now. All right, you're in. I love this. You're I'm not a corner. fantasy football player, but that's been the running. That's been the joke the last few days. I am. I'm football fan. Okay. In the off season, this is what we'll work on. I'll train you for this. Okay. But yesterday was the first Sunday of the NFL season. Yep. I, I watched know, some. I I know that the dugouts and the clubhouse are nuts. With, like guys are going crazy because of the fantasy football stuff, aren't they? Yeah, we had football on a bunch of TVs in the Oakland clubhouse in the morning. Uh-huh. Guys had their phones out with their fantasy stuff. Who's who's the who's the uh, the linchpin of that of that group? Who loves it the most? Linchpin. Never heard that. Isn't that lead, the leader? Did I misuse it? I've never heard of that term. Okay, sorry. I believe you that it's a term. Boy, you gave me the frowny face on it. No, oh, we might have to edit it out. No, no, no. I don't mean, I, no, I was, I was it's like interesting. <laughs> it's a new one. Okay. But all right. Who's the guy who's, who's most into it? Um, a lot of guys are into it. Uh, AJ, I think AJ and Joe are on a team. Lance is doing his own thing. I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, a bunch of guys are in on it. Like a, a lot of guys like team up. Yeah. Whatever you do with Pollock these days, don't mention to him Notre Dame's record. Oh, oh no. It's yeah. It's like, it's a joke. We talk about it. Yeah. 
for people who don't know, he went to AJ Pollock, went to Notre Dame. It has not been a fruitful start to the market. Hey, I have a question. Yes. Were you one of those assholes that would make fun of and do memes about Manti Teo? No, absolutely not. You you didn't do it. No way. No, you can check my Twitter for that. No way. Thank There's God. No way. Didn't don't you think that he came out looking great in that documentary? The documentary was unbelievable. I felt so bad for him the entire time. I didn't feel at all bad for the person that did it to him. They tried to no. what? No, I that person was struggling though with with some things going on. Absolutely, but you don't ruin another person's life over it. I agree. Everyone has struggles. Trust me, I am me. I watched it with Ari. We are as open minded as it gets. You know this. Yeah. Like, I know. But don't drag other people down in your own shit. Just don't do it. I know. I know. I felt so bad for him. I, cause I didn't, I, I was like in high school at the time. Again, I wasn't a football fan, especially not a college football fan. Uh, so I, I knew it was like a catfishing situation, mm-hmm. but that's all I really knew. I didn't know that he, like, after it happened, like in the dead and the dead spin guys, like, oh, it was unreal. It really was. That was another thing, too. The, the dead spin writers, like, they're trying to justify it. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a story about exposing ESPN. No, it's not. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? You're trying to get your name out there with a big story, dragging this dude down. Did you did you see my little cameo in it? Yes. Yes. I think that's partly why I'm asking. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, Chris Rose. Yeah, I've got I've gotten a lot of texts from that one and I'm in an and one documentary. The and well. one I have lined up. I'm going to watch the and one one. I'm in there, too. That one. I'm even way younger. Yeah, you got. Oh, to, yeah. So you got to meet like the professor and all those guys. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, we had we had them on our show and stuff. I had I haven't watched the N one yet. I got to get to that. That's my but Yeah, the uh, Manti Teo. I'm glad that he's thriving now. He had a nice little NFL career. Yeah, he he did. It, I I felt like it was always hanging over his head because he'll just always be that guy. I think, but I do think that the documentary finally put a period on this discussion and i thought geez there's the yeah there you are and one oh hot sauce (laughs) oh god that was amazing (laughs) oh man that brings yeah i didn't mean to just barge in with my opinions on the manti teo but great it was a great it was a great documentary i think it told the story well um yeah be careful Everybody be careful <laughs> the internet. <laughs> it lives forever, sir. Yeah. Uh let's spin the wheel. Giving mood. Forget if I asked you this. The last thing you bought somebody. Did we talk about this? I don't know. Get Ari anything nice recently? Um, maybe something you. When she 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 came out to visit me last weekend, before a road trip. Um, I got her some flowers when she arrived. At were you at the airport? No, her flight landed when I was at the field. But I I came back from the field with flowers that evening. That is very nice. I Thank like you. that. And then we nope. went to the then we went to the zoo the next morning. Oh, the Lincoln Park Zoo. Is that kind of a prerequisite if, for a veterinarian to go to the zoo in whatever city she's visiting? Not necessarily. I'm kidding. We, we were trying to get like the you know try to play up the White Sox connection and and get like the backstage where you get to go in and like hang out with the veterinarians and. And all that, but they, they had a conference. There was like a, a zoo aquarium conference that they were all at that weekend. So 
I'm not laughing at this. They had a what? A conference. For for all the zoo veterinarians? Like zoo aquarium workers or whatever. I didn't get a lot of details. I just was like, oh, unfortunately, we won't be able to do like, you know, all the, the behind the scenes stuff because they're all out. That is amazing. Yeah. Lincoln Park Zoo. Like very nice. Biggest, Check um, it out if you're in Chicago. Okay. It's free. Okay. Just walk right in. Nice. Well, you know, you do have a little bit of a uh, big time zoo in the San Diego area. So you can always go. Yes. We, yeah. I've been to the San Diego Zoo and the Wild Animal Park before. I look forward okay. to going back as well. All right. I've been since I was a child. Oh, this would be nice. Um, Legoland as well. Do you, will you do Legoland? Um, I did when I was a kid. Yeah. Will you go back? Eh. No, I love Legos. I love Legos. Really? I got Miguel Rojas and his. You son. know, Liam loves Legos like oh, more I, than I anyone know. I've he's, ever met. Yeah. He's built a ton of Lego stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A couple times a year. I've told you this. I think Brady and I, my youngest son, who's about to turn 17, at least twice a year, we have big Lego projects. Have now you done the big star? Have you done Star Wars like the yeah Millennium Falcon? Uh, haven't done that yet. That's like the big. That's a big one. I know. That's, that's There's big like a budget. full interior. That's you know, if I had George Lucas's contract, then yes, I would. You know, still working on this John Boy money. Um, yeah, but I did see a cute picture of you and Louie on the uh, on the gram. Oh, that was from All Star Break. That is adorable. Yeah. I mean, that is look at him. He's like knocked out. You, I get. He's like sleeping. Yeah. He'll sleep there. He'll sleep on you? Yeah, little spoon. <laughs> Louis the inside spoon. Yeah. It would be a little weird if he was the outside spoon. I gotta be honest with you. He what he likes to do is he He'll like, we'll be like in bed and it's at night and he'll be like on the floor and then he'll come up on the bed and he'll just like stand there and like look at either me or Ari until we open up the covers and he goes all the way to the end of the bed, like where our feet are under the covers and he like goes and like creates his little bed and then he lays down and he'll be in there probably for like 15 20 minutes until it's like too hot and he probably can't breathe and then he goes back on the floor and he lays down like this <laughs> it's like a whole cycle he does oh louie i don't know why he like it's too hot in there there's no way i'm getting anywhere near lucas giolito's feet i don't care <laughs> what i'm doing oh that's good though that's funny all right what do you have planned for the rest of the day you got an off day hmm Laundry? Yep. Got some laundry. Um, Play some video games. Yeah, I haven't played video games in a little bit. Maybe a little video games. Hang out with my roomie. Pardon me? My roommate? Why are you raising your eyebrows? Who's your roommate? <laughs> I, just, I, I, picked, I picked one up. Like a put that out. About? What? <laughs> Just kidding. It's Sebi Zavala. What? Yeah. Sebi's I have a, living it? Yeah, I'm in a I have a like a three bed. Well, this is technically a bedroom, but it's tiny. It's like my computer room. But there's a guest bedroom. Sebi lives here. He's been here since he got called up earlier this year. Talk about burying the lead. What do you mean burying the lead? That's a journalism expression we use. You put the most important stuff in the first paragraph. You're saving this for the end of the show. Oh, yeah. I was trying okay. to freak you out. Like, I just got a random roommate. Like, I'm yeah. a... <laughs> <laughs> There's a new movie coming out called Single White Male. It's going to be great. Is he a good roommate? Is he clean? Oh, fantastic. We go and get breakfast pretty much every morning. We tried a new spot. We tried a new spot this morning. Um, not that impressed. 
Okay. I don't want to like name names of no, businesses fine. and no. do all that, but um, yeah, it's great. We're currently, uh, he just caught up on Better Call Saul. So now we're watching season six, the final season of Better Call Saul together. Huh. I just finished watching Sopranos, by the way, all of it. And? Favorite, it's my favorite show of all time. Were you good with the ending or no? Yes. Loved it. Loved okay. it. Yeah. I didn't did you watch it. it at the time? Like, did you watch it like when it aired originally? Yeah. That's what I asked my parents because they, I remember them watching it when it aired, but I was like 12. And I remember they had a reaction to the ending. But just in general, like when that happened in real time and every, it was like, appointment television right everybody watched that that last mm-hmm. season the sopranos mm-hmm. and saw it all happen live like what was it like were people pissed yeah because there's first of all there's never a good way to end the show ever like any show that is that legendary you know it's just at least half the people are going to hate it i didn't hate it at all i lo- i love ambiguous I love it. I, I've always liked ambiguous endings in TV and movies where it's like, hey, you we're the story is finished. You get to decide kind of what do you think happens instead of just like force feeding exactly what the plot. Oh, here, mm-hmm. this is what happened. Yeah. Kind of leave fair. it up to leave it up to your interpretation. I like what it. What do you think happened? Um. The way I see it is like, yeah, he's probably shot by the guy in the members only jacket. But does it even matter? It doesn't really matter because it's all crashing down around him at that point. Anyways, I don't know if you like remember a lot of the details, but. I mean, Silvio is is comatose. He's done. Polly Walnuts is starting to realize like a. I'm getting old. This is getting to be a little bit too much. Like he turned down Tony's offer to like take over the sanitation business or whatever it is. Like he's starting to get, he saw what he saw, like uh, the Virgin Mary in in the strip club. Like Mm -hmm. he's starting to be like, "Eh, it's too much. Um, You know, I, Johnny sack, he died. Everyone's, everyone's dying. It's all falling apart. Like, it's it's not looking good and tony at this point has like he's not trying to be a better person anymore like it's done he he's like fully embraced the narcissism fully embraced his like sociopathic tendencies it's all going to come crashing and burning like that's it so whether he gets murdered in that scene or you know he gets murdered later right or he goes to prison because that's another thing is lawyer, like in the final episodes, lawyers like, yeah, like they're going to be coming with indictments here soon. Yeah. I'm like 85% sure. So it's all, I mean, it's all going to come crashing down. Mm-hmm. I think I told you that on best damn, we used to have Bobby Bacala all the time. Steve. No Shripa. way. Oh yeah. He was a guest host all the time and was no awesome. Way. Oh yeah. We used to shoot great skits with him. We had him, we had Paulie Walnuts. We had Stevie Van Zandt on. Um, all together, it was amazing. Wow, yeah, that was some good shit back in the day. But but I'm like pissed at myself for like waiting so long to watch it. Yeah, come on, you're in a good good place in your life and everything. It was a good time to do it. Yeah, you're good. We just best, finished best that. television writing ever. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, it was amazing. Um, we just finished Blackbird. I don't know Blackbird on Apple. It's based on a true story. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It's six episodes, about an hour each. Worth it. You can get through it quickly. Yeah. Road trip. Put it on your. Oh, I I got through I got through six seasons of The Sopranos in probably a month. Life of a starting pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with like our longer plane rides. Yeah. But I think I'm going to watch Deadwood next. Oh, yeah. 
Didn't do it. Did you watch Boardwalk Empire? Did not. I did not. I was talking to my mom about Boardwalk Empire, and she said um, she didn't find Steve Buscemi to be believable in that role. Hmm. I said, really? I think he's a really good actor. I'm a big Buscemi guy. I think it's, yeah, it's fantastic. He was really good in Sopranos. Oh, the dream sequences. Man. Yeah. Yeah. This is a bad time for me for t- for streaming, viewing, whatever it is. Between baseball. You're working to too much. Every game and then NFL. And then we're going to throw BattleBots on top of it from mid-October on. It's not. It's not Where's, where is BattleBots? It's in Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. All in Las Vegas. If you guys drop by, let me know. You'll get the VIP treatment. You get the I really want to. I really huh? do. I really do want to come by and see it. Dude. Well, hope hopefully for you, you're uh, busy. When? Mid October. Oh, mid October. Yeah. When does it end though? Like, how long are the battles? It's going until. It's we're only there two weeks. We shoot. It all happens in two weeks, dude. Tell me about. It. We're shooting twenty seven episodes over eleven shoot days. Oh, <laughs> yeah, dang, yeah, they're getting their money's worth. That's all I can say. I That's love awesome. doing it though. I love it, and you can, by the way, check out my uh, Instagram or social media people for for tickets. We want to see you out there the live. You know, the fans make it great. It's really cool. All right, uh, tell Ari and tell your roommate, Mr. Savala. We say hello. Absolutely. You know, could have popped his head and just waved. Would have been cool. I don't know. He's probably <laughs> he's probably playing video games or something. Perfect. The modern athlete. I mm-hmm. love it. All right, dude. Thanks for checking in. It was good to catch up. I wish you luck down the stretch. Kind of. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. Special shout out to our one and only Robbie Shirocco. Have you seen Rob's mustache? No. Rob, you got to pop on. Is that amazing? Waluigi. Yeah, me and Dylan. You know, we're we're getting it. Hell yeah. Dude, <laughs> it looks so fake because Rob is not the biggest guy ever. Nope. Look at Lucas checking it out. It looks seriously, it looks like um it does. It feels glued on sometimes. The like way it, it just, looks. Yeah. Just, I, you know. I like it. Thank you. Appreciate I, it. I like your baseball hat. Yeah. It's a John Boy, uh, John Boy exclusive, I guess. Ooh. You mm-hmm. want one, Lucas? Yeah, we'll get you one. I mean, by the way, what size stuff do you wear? Double XL? What is that supposed to mean? Because <laughs> well, you, you're huge. You're a big dude. Yeah. Like shirts? Yeah. Yeah, this T-shirt's a two XL. But that, yeah, I mean, you're making it sound like I just called you fat. I didn't call you fat. You're a big dude. You're six six two fifty. I know. I'm just, I'm just messing around. Um, yeah, two XL mainly. We'll hook you up. Sometimes an XLT for a little more mean? slim fit look. Extra, oh. extra large, tall instead of two XL. Because mm, two XL. Like yes. Boxy. Yes. With yeah. two so XL and 2XL like a t-shirt. Not a lot of difference in length, like maybe an inch. But it depends on the brand. Some brands like the XL and 2XL are the same exact length. The only difference in the 2XL and the XL is like the XL is like this, the 2XL is like this, just wider. Oh. So it's like then I'm wearing like this like dress shirt that's like, you know, come stops at my belly button. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> Rob, how would you look in a 2XL? That would be my nightgown. I mean, it, would be, it would be past my knees. Yeah. So, you know, but it's, it's cool. I, I like my little smalls. I'm all comfy cozy. I'd be Louie. Me and you. I'd be okay. Louie. Now we've now we hit the weird <laughs> stage. We've officially hit the weird stage. As I've said before, we love our short kings. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, God. 
All right, Lucas, uh, thanks for hanging out. And thanks very much to you for watching, consuming, and listening. This has been the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.